No. Speaking of on one, <laughs> speaking of on one, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Mercury is in retrograde because <laughs> I can't even tell you what the hell is going on this week. Here we go. Folks Here we go. are losing Buckle their up. ever-loving minds. Buckle They're up. losing their minds. Shaquille, this is where we need you to put on LSU Love Shack University hat because day after day, it has been this person stepping out on this person, this person's cheating on this person. What is happening? First, we mm, had our mm, friend, mm. my celebrity crush, Adam Levine. He got in front of his stuff. Then the next day, now we have Ime Udoka and the situation going on in Boston. I am going to step down from this conversation. Let me tell okay. you why. Okay. I was a serial cheater. It would be mm-hmm. crazy and blasphemous for me to get up here and say, boom, boom, bam. I can't do that. I know these guys personally. I know they're going through a lot because I went through a lot. I uh, just wish that, you know, certain parties weren't involved. Like, I, I've, I've known Neil Long for a long, long time. I like her. I know yeah. Adam for a long time. And they're going through a lot of family stuff. But I'm I'm never the guy that's going to get up here because of my platform and fake it. I did it. You know, I was the best at it. Uh, I'm not proud of it. I lost my family doing it. I uh, lost uh, valuable, important years with my children from doing it. So I refuse to get up here. You shouldn't have did this. You shouldn't have did that. I'm not that guy. I'm real with the situation. So in, yes. in, in law terms, I can say I'm going to do something, right? But until I make the overt act, it's not really a crime. Like I can say right now, next person that calls my friend and pranks call him on the phone, I'm going to go punch him in the face. Now, if I actually take my car and start driving towards their house to, you know, commit a crime, then that's conspiracy. I can be charged with conspiracy. But to answer your question, no, it is not worth it. But let me tell you why. The happiest days of my life were coming home and hearing six different people say, Daddy, Daddy, that happiest days of my life. Forget the money, forget the cars, even forget the championships, especially when they were little and two and three and didn't really care that I missed 10, 15 free throws. They wait up for me at the games. And, Daddy, can we go to Universal? Those are the best days of my life. When I lost those, I'm not going to use the D word because I know a lot of people are suffering with that, but I was all the way down. And sometimes right. I'm still all the way down, especially when I was in my house in Orlando, which is 70,000 square feet, in there by myself. Right. Nobody. Like, I built a house for the kids, gym, game room. Pool house, this and that, guest house for the mom and all that. When I lost that by being stupid, it, it killed me. So to answer your question, no, it's not worth it. I wish these two fellas the best. I wish they can come through it, and I hope they do not lose their families over what was done. So again, I'm yeah. not going to sit here and say and you know call these people out because I did it. And Shaquille O'Neal is never to never want to be a hypocrite in real life situations. I'll, I'll always be a hypocrite in basketball. The Celtics organization, what were your thoughts on this message here? Well, <clears throat> well, one, to me, I, I, I didn't like Brad comments on this. And let me explain why. Not the, the fact that he was taken up and protecting the women in the organization, but, you know, he said about the speculations and the, and the Twitter BS and things to that nature and how unfair it was to the women in the organization that is not involved with this particular situation. And I get that, right? But why is it speculations? It's speculations because of the reports that were put out by the actual Boston Celtics. So they didn't do a great job from the jump of actually protecting the women in their organization because knowing that they were going to sit up here and, 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 and give out this information and go out here and, and uh, suspend Ime Udoka and, and talk about just give a little details, it's going to have people speculating. And in my eyes, I feel like the Boston Celtics dropped the ball not only in protecting their entire franchise, but in t- protecting the women as well and also the players. Think about this for a second. It's no way in hell that everyone in this organization didn't know about this situation over the last however many months, probably the last year, right? 
Everybody knew about it. So now you're bringing players involved. Nobody's even talking about how the players are going to be affected. Nobody's going to be talking about how maybe the players are going to get called into office and have to deal with a situation or talk about a situation when they really shouldn't have to be doing that anyway because everybody knew about it. So my thing was, was this. Before this came out publicly, before they decided to make a decision, they should have made sure that they crossed their T's and dotted their I's before they put this information out. And I get it. Now we're to this point, and now he had to go on here and he had to say this and he had to say that to protect those innocent women. But at the end of the day, man, it just ain't right how they went about it. And, and Perk, I have to agree with you to some degree because a lot of times the Celtics, what they got right was probably the process, bringing someone in externally and handling an investigation. But the proliferation of the information is what drug the women through the mud. And to me, as a woman who works in the sports industry and you know a lot of these colleagues, it just is unfair what they've had to deal with. And even though the intentions were right, the way that the messaging went out and how it was handled, that's another way that you have to look in the mirror as an organization and say, when we're in times like this, and I think everyone around the NBA is looking, when we're in times like this, unfortunately, you know, you God forbid, but if there's a situation, we have to make sure everyone's protected as we're releasing this information. And I, I think to Zach's point, I know you said you didn't agree, Perk, about, you know, Brad Stevens and his comments. I think what you saw there was the president of basketball operations feeling, um, you know, disheartened based on the experiences he's had because he's now no longer in that head coach role where you handle the X's and O's. Instead, he's probably the one that's the face face to face and having plethora of conversations with these women, seeing them being distraught or even just well, having to manage that. I think that's what you're seeing more so from Brad Stevens, not necessarily yep. saying that, you know, everything that they handled was perfect. Right. And, and listen, I agree to that aspect, but here's the thing too. The word accountability, okay? Accountability doesn't just go to Ime Udoka, okay? Accountability goes to the other people that play the part in that as well. Let me tell you another thing I didn't like about my good friend uh, Wick Grossbeck and Brad Stevens in this press conference when they asked, is anybody else going to be punished? And they said no. And my whole thing is, is this, right? These are some of the facts that have been out. These are some facts that I know that, you know, this relationship, one of these relationships that was had that was had with Ime Udoka and one of these women, it was consensual, meaning that this woman actually played a part in it too. So my thing is, yes, Ime Udoka was wrong. We get that. His punishment, he deserved that, and whatever else follows, I hate it for him, but he put himself in this position. But why are the other people getting left off the hook? Well, That's the Kendrick, problem that I have Kendrick, right now. Kendrick, Everybody got to be held Kendrick, accountable. I think that we need to circle back to what Shanae said, is that there was a investigation that was conducted by an independent law firm here, and without i think that transparency is what will rule the day here and so without having all of the information it is unfair and irresponsible of us to go and to speculate on that because what we have to well, i'm not i'm not speculating sure. i have the information i'm mm -hmm. not speculating but what we have to go with here is the fact that an independent law firm came in did this investigation and the facts that they were presented, they came to the conclusion that Ime Udoka violated a policy that, that warranted a one-year suspension. And I share your frustration with the lack of transparency while understanding that there is some things that they need to, from a legal perspective, keep private. But knowing all of that, understanding all of that, we have to come to the uh, conclusion that whatever rule, the conduct that was broken on one side, it is not the same on the other side. I thank you for your perspective. Uh, we will revisit this story later in our show. We also have a little bit of basketball to get to. So still to come on NBA Today, hear what Steve Kerr had to say about Steph Curry. And is Giannis the best player in the league? Plus, of Boston, as Adrian Wojnarowski reported, center Robert Williams will be out 8 to 12 weeks after undergoing successful surgery on his left knee. That timeline 
has Williams back at the earliest around the end of November, but the latest would be Christmas. And so coming off a finals loss, it's been a tough offseason for the Celtics. They started it with lead assistant coach Will Hardy going to the Jazz. Boston made some big offseason moves. They acquired Malcolm Brogdon from the Pacers, but then Danilo Gallinari tore his ACL. We got this news from Woj a couple of weeks ago in the surgery now completed. The, the Celtics have announced that, that Robert Williams is going to be out 8 to 12 weeks, and Ime Udoka has been suspended for the season. So up until this week, the Celtics, they were widely considered, when you looked at the Vegas lines even, the winners of the offseason and the favorites heading into the year. But there is so much that is going on in Boston right now. So, Zach, I'm going to start with you here. When you look at what is going to happen with the Celtics on the court this year, how do you assess that? So the Celtics season turned last year when they implemented a new defensive scheme that was centered around Robert Williams. The two most important ingredients in that scheme were Ime Odoka, who with his coaches came up with it, and Robert Williams, who they put off the ball and said, you're going to guard the worst offensive player on the other team, regardless of position, and block the heck out of everybody at the rim. <laughs> and they took off like a rocket ship. Both those ingredients are gone. One for the whole season, one for 30-plus games. You mentioned Gallinari. You didn't mention... Jalen Brown kind of recovering from being mentioned in Kevin Durant trade talks. It's just so much instability. It's hard enough to win a title, which is mm. the goal. When everything's great and everyone's healthy, it's really hard when you got to come together and shut out all this noise and deal with these kind of injuries. Well, you know, I think that, I, you know, I'm a glass half full girl, okay? We all know you're a glass half full <laughs> I'm girl. I'm a glass half full if girl. the slightest <laughs> bit of sunshine, Chanae is going to an I'm going to find it. I, okay, so I'm going to start with the good, right? The good is that this is a team that was two wins away from, you know, an NBA championship. So they have the blueprint. They have the roadmap to figure out, like, we know what it feels like. We know what a final series feels like. We know exactly what that defense was like. We know who we need to have off ball. We know who we need to have on ball. Like, they have that feel, and for Hooper, that's very important because you feel like once you know that you can build off of that and so they're going to probably feel like we can go out there and compete but at yeah. the end of the day having a young coach the youngest in the NBA right Malika 34 yes. years old that's stepping in that has three years of as an assistant coach on staff with the Celtics it's all about adjustments when it comes to the biggest moments of the year when it comes to the playoffs mm. and so that experience of trying to navigate what we knew last year that worked but also what is your style and how that can work for us now that's going to be really difficult so I'm not completely down because these players are mature enough and every year we've seen individually and with talented. their game talented yeah every year individually with their game they make leaps and bounds it's just you know strategically in those difficult moments one possession two possession games how do we defend this how do we score on that that's sort of where you need that coach to elevate you and we'll see what coach joe has Kendrick. you I, you know what? I feel pretty confident in the Celtics, even though they've been through a lot and they're dealing with this situation. And here's why. When you're dealing with this type of situation, I feel like this could bring the team even closer, okay? Mm. And I feel like when you look at Brad Stevens and he said this was the best guy for the job and it wasn't even close, that means that goes to show me that he actually have a relationship and he has the respect in that locker room. And when you have guys like Al Horford, a guy like Al Horford in there that could actually be an extension of the uh, coach on and off the floor, then all of a sudden you could have that togetherness. All of a sudden, we wa we watched the Celtics last year. We watched them struggle tremendously the first half of the season to the point where I thought it was time to break the Jays up, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. We remember. All of a I sudden, they, they gathered it. We remember. Yeah, yeah it's, it's cool. I know we keep receipts. It's all good. Listen, but it came it came down to the point they were about three games below 500, and then they went on one of the best regular season runs towards the end of the season in NBA history. So this team thrive off of adversity. They're going to miss Robert Williams, mm. but they have enough to get it done. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are going to take the necessary steps for us, their leadership, and they'll be okay. I think they'll be fine. And Perk, I know that was reverse psychology. Like, let me say break up the Jays so that they come together and band against me, and then we start winning. I, that, was, Perk that was, mm -hmm. I mean, just a little bit. No, that's, that's really how I feel. <laughs> I feel you. Um, I think, you know, especially to Zach's <laughs> point, you know, you're going to miss that anchor in Robert Williams, but at the same time, when do the Celtics turn things around? Around Christmas Day, that's when you can potentially get him back, and they turned into the number one defense for the rest of the season. So as much as it looks bad not having him, I do do think there is a little bit where I mean it would help you're right Malik 
Like, I see her on the side, like, saying, you need him from the jump. This is true. Uh, but having him at all next season, you know you have enough talented players to stay floated in the East. Yeah, well, particularly, I, I have I have faith in what Malcolm Brogdon. I know it's completely different when you're talking about big men here, but I, I think that that's going to be a really interesting thing to watch for the Celtics on the court this season.